Hello everyone, back to into today's uh, first video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week's 10 days for today's first video, uh, which will take us to something like the 28th of May. We'll be able to extend out beyond that the extended GFS and ECM ensembles so we'll run to around a couple of weeks. So we'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That of course takes us into the second half of June. Uh, so if you want to do anything else, I've got to say a big thank you to our latest uh, YouTube channel member. So uh, we have got a new uh, channel member for YouTube. So hello and thank you very much to Lee Warren. Thank you so much, Lee Warren, for becoming our latest uh, Gazworthy's YouTube channel member. That's really great. That's really kind. And thank you so much, uh, Lee, for doing that. If you would like to become a channel member for Gazworthy's, all you need to do is come to the Gals Weathers YouTube homepage, click the join button that you see there and uh, it will take you through to another page where you can see what benefits you get for becoming a YouTube channel member and you can uh, sign up. The join button is also with all of the videos as well. If you can't see the join button, the workaround is to use a uh, link that is uh, in the description with the videos and we also link to it on the homepage at gazwebbies.com. It's relatively easy uh, to get to that. Uh, we've been doing this for around three and a half weeks now and the response has been absolutely phenomenal so thank you so much everybody uh, for becoming uh, channel members for Gaz Webbies. that's absolutely fantastic thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that of course special thank you to Lee Warren our latest uh, channel member uh, so we started a uh, Discord uh, for Gaz Webovitz, uh yesterday, uh, so we announced this in the live stream. It's just another way of allowing everybody to uh, check in and chat and communicate with one another and uh, what not. So uh, the link to uh, Gaz Webber's Discord will be with the description with this video and all future videos as well. So click that link. If you'd like to sign up to, uh, to our Discord, click that link and it will take you through to our Discord page. And there you can, um, you can join join our Discord and uh, you know you can chat and, uh, and uh, communicate and post with, uh, with the other members of the Gaz Webber's uh, Discord community. We're going to be putting the chat back to gazwebbies.com on the 1st of June as well. That will be going back onto the website on the 1st of June. We're across social media. We're across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, of course. Let's not forget YouTube. Uh, we've got Discord now. Um, and, of course, the website as well, gazwebbies.com. So you name it, we're on it. And uh, we're going to keep bringing you the content that uh, you want to see and you're enjoying. So just thank you so much, everybody, for the support you've given us over the past few uh, weeks during this crisis has been absolutely fantastic and uh, we're going to keep on going we're going to keep recording and uploading and live streaming and uh, we're going to keep all of the platforms going as well and the chat is going back on to uh from the 1st of June right let's move on I'm going to start off by having a look at uh, what's going on in the topics so this is uh, Tropical Storm Arthur we said about this in the study roundup uh, yesterday Tropical Storm Arthur is in the Atlantic Ocean it's sort of gr uh, giving a glancing blow to the coast of the Carolinas particularly North Carolina uh, at the moment. So uh, Tropical Storm Arthur is uh, currently giving maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour with a central pressure of 1,002 millibars and it's moving north northeast at around 14 miles per hour. This is the forecast track of Arthur from the National Hurricane Center. So current position is just here and Arthur is going to carry on moving uh, northeast was out into the Atlantic by time it through to tomorrow. It's uh, moving off the coast of the American away from the coast of America and then by the end of tomorrow it's down to a subtropical storm uh, by the end of the week it'll be down to a subtropical depression that should pretty much be the end of Arthur very significant though that we're seeing this tropical storm this early in the season we haven't actually started the official start of this, uh, of this tropical storm and hurricane season in the Atlantic yet. Yeah, that's the 1st of June. So we've already got our first named storm in and we haven't actually started uh, the season yet. So I think we could be in for quite a big season uh, with these uh, storms and, um, uh, and possibly hurricanes as well. Uh, 
Sensing temperature uh, is looking like this at the moment. This is provisional uh, to the 17th to yesterday, uh, standing at 10.6. That's an anomaly of 0.2 of a degree below average. That is provisional to uh, yesterday. So a little bit below average still, but that's going to rise over the next few days. We are in for some very warm weather up to around uh, Wednesday and Thursday anyway. It's going to be very warm. Temperatures pushing into the possibly even upper 20 Celsius with some southern parts of the country around Wednesday and Thursday. So it's going to get a lot warmer. That CT is going to get a big boost over the um, coming days. These are the 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts for the next week, 10 days for Penn State University. We've got the ECMWF on the top. The GFS is on the bottom. 500 millibars is an area in the atmosphere. High pressure, low pressure have been moved around by the jet stream running above. Rare extrapolates to high pressure blue to low pressure. So in the week, 10 day time frame, uh, the ECM is showing a large area of above average heights. High pressure extending up from the Azores high into northern parts of Europe. Below average heights pushed out into the uh, Northern Atlantic around Greenland and Iceland jet stream and flow doing something like that. That looks like a very warm and dry pattern really as we go to the end of May. Remember this is taking us to like 28th of May so more or less the end of month. That looks like a very warm and dry pattern that is setting up there uh, with the uh, ECM as we move into uh, days 8, 9, 10 uh, sort of time frame. The uh, GFS is also uh, very similar, a little bit flatter with the ridge. The GFS has a ridge just a little bit further uh, southwards, lower pressure up to the north. Jet stream, just a little bit flatter uh, with the GFS, but there's not much in it. And uh, overall, I think we could be looking at uh, an ongoing signal, so the Azores high to be quite rigid. Again, we spoke about this yesterday in Gaswell, we're sitting around a hand in the live stream. It does look as though the Azores high is really quite rigid at the moment. It's wanting to throw up ridges into northern and western Europe. And so I would suspect we're in for more warm and dry weather in uh, in the next week to 10 days. So there will be an unsettled interlude as we go into the end of this week with some further storms on Thursday and then maybe some showery rain into Bank Holiday weekend. But I think overall high pressure is never going to be too far away. These are the GFS upper air temperature precipitation ensembles on at Shrewsbury uh, today. So the red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Shrewsbury. Uh, and we're starting off above average at the moment of course. Temperatures are warm now. going to be staying warm right way through to the end of week. Then at the end of the week and into the bank on the weekend, they do uh, drop a little bit. They cool off for a while anyway, but not for all that long. It looks like as we go into next week, actually, the upper air temperatures are probably going to lift up again uh, more than anything. Overall, coming out warmer than average, really, with the uh, upper air temperatures, uh, certainly in the next week to 10 days. Precipitation-wise, quite a bit of dry weather. Coming up over the next few days, it's completely dry until around Thursday. Then Thursday, Friday, we might get some heavy showers, maybe a bit of thunder sparking off, going drier again then by the look of it into the bank holiday weekend. Possibly right at the very end of the chart, taking us to the end of May, beginning of June time, we see more precipitation spikes. But again, that's extended range. It's unreliable for both the GFS and its ensemble. In the reliable time frame, it looks as though we're more or less on the drier side, really, uh, and quite warm as well. Temperature anomalies from the 18th, 26th of May are warmer than average, going to be a milder than average week, or warmer than average week uh, coming up. Precipitation anomalies from the 18th, 26th of May, still mostly on the dry and average side, a little bit wetter for northwestern Scotland, but generally we're on the dry and average side, particularly so for England and the Wales. That's how the GFS is looking for Thursday. So on Thursday, we've got high pressure sitting over to the east of the country. Low pressure is out to our west. We are bringing a trough from off the Atlantic. So that's breaking down the very warm uh, conditions that we've got coming up over the next few days. Uh, Thursday might spark off some heavy showers and thunderstorms. People asking already about Stormwatch. I'll keep it under review. If we get to around the middle of the week, it looks like we're going to kick off some big storms on Thursday, then we will do Stormwatch. But I like to wait until that comes into like the high res time frame of the models, um, both for Stormwatch and for Snowwatch, as you all know. Now we go through to Friday and quite a deep area of low pressure then starts to power in from off the Atlantic. That could bring some gales to northern and western parts of Scotland, maybe some more rain. But that one then moves away, that low moves away. It's not long at all into the Bank Holiday weekend before we're building up this ridge from the south again. So it's just a little interruption really to the dry theme 
like Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday, but by Sunday we're already going back to this ridge of high pressure uh, from the Azores, and that uh, taking us into Bank Holiday Monday looks like it could bring some very warm and dry weather to England and Wales for Bank Holiday Monday. We will have a look at the Bank Holiday weekend in detail uh, tonight. We'll do our fifth update for Bank Holiday weekend tonight. Into uh, tomorrow, uh, into Tudor, I should say, uh, and again, the high pressure is dominating weather. That high pressure continues to stick around the country and dominate weather as we move up towards day 10. This is Wednesday, 27th of May, a ridge of high pressure sitting over to the east. Again, probably drawing out some very warm air from the south. That could lift temperatures into the uh, into the mid-20s Celsius, I would have thought. Day 10, just starting to bring a little bit of a system in both the Atlantic that's bringing some shy rain into more northwest parts of the country. And in the extended range, this GFS run does start to turn things a little bit more uh, unsettled and cooler as we go through the opening days of June. But again, this is a long way out. It's unreliable time frame and in the more reliable time frame we continue to have this signal the high pressure to want to reach from the Azores high. That's the GEM again Thursday some sort of trough coming across the country bringing a showery band of rain could be a little bit of thunder involved with that we shall see then go through to Friday again looking quite unsettled with this low pressure in from off the Atlantic particularly the northwestern areas does bring some wet and windy weather there. But over that Holiday weekend, again, the Azores High starts to make its move, building up from the south and the southwest. So by Bank Holiday Monday, the GM has us back under that ridge of high pressure from the Azores. Only a very, very short interruption to the unsettled weather. And then we move on into the uh, middle of next week, and we're looking very warm here. High pressure over to the east of the country, uh, dragging up very warm air, maybe even quite hot air uh, from the south. There's the upper air temperature showing the plus 15 Celsius ice firm getting towards southern parts of England. This looks like a very warm pattern that's setting up again through the course of next week. By day 10, which is Thursday the 28th of May, possibly then just starting to reach you some cooler air from off the Atlantic, but of course that's a long way off. The ECMWF, again, very, very similar could be a bit of a thundery trough on uh, on Thursday. Then Friday, quite a deep area of low pressure just out to west of Ireland. Could bring some heavy rain and strong winds. Certainly quite unsettled start to back on weekend for northwest areas. I doubt there'll be all that much rain down in the south and the southeast. And then as we go through Sunday and into Monday, then the Azores high makes its move again. So by back on Monday, we're back under that ridge from the Azores, turning mostly dry. And you would have thought warm or very warm too. Moving up towards day 10. The high pressure goes on. It becomes quite a big area of high pressure actually dominating the weather. So next week, looking completely dry and very warm uh, on that ECM uh, solution. We saw it on the height and flow flowchart, of course. This is a precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. Uh, showery rain in the north and west uh, today. We keep some of those showery rain, uh, sorry, bursts of rain going overnight into tomorrow. But gradually the rain's fading out as the ridge of high pressure uh, takes over weather through the middle part of the week. That's Thursday. Could spark off some heavy showers or possibly thunderstorms. They do look quite scattered, quite hit and miss. But there might be some big downpours around on Thursday. You've got to firm up on that. And then wet and windy in the north and west through into Friday. Very little rain, though getting down towards the southeast. Certainly cool a fresher feel Friday into the weekend. Into the weekend, showing rain in the north and the west, mainly dry in the southeast. And then, of course, got the ridge building back up from the Azores high again uh, as we go further on into Bank Holiday weekend. That turns us dry uh, and fine and also increasingly warm once again. And that takes us through to day 10, really, with very little in the way of rain. Just some showery bursts in the north. But really, it's a dry scene uh, and very warm scene through much of next week. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, getting us to the 28th of uh, May. So we have 19 members of the ECM ensembles with a lot of high pressure centred more or less over and slightly to the south of the country. Again, you expect a lot of dry and warm weather with that. That does include the operational run. Uh, another 19 have high pressure more or less over the top of the country. Again, jet streams pushed northwards. And 13 just here has a high pressure just a little bit more to the southwest and might bring in something slightly more showery and a little bit cooler from the northwest but really all options are pointing towards high pressure being very dominant at day 10 in two weeks time this is the option that we've got gets us to the uh second of june um an area of above average height centered out to our west then so possibly a little bit cooler bringing in the wind from the northwest and slightly more showery as we begin june but of course this is a really really long way out 
Finally, the CFSV2 means the 500 millibar height is broken down into weekly pairs. The first weekly pair is going to take us from the 18th to 24th of May. The uh, coming week will be dominated by high pressure sitting over to the south and west of the country. Low pressure out to the northwest. Jet stream doing something a little bit like that. There's a lot of dry and warm weather to enjoy in the week ahead. Week 2 is the 25th of May to the 31st. Some lower pressure up to the northwest. Higher pressure down to the south. West winds again rather flat. Could just be a little bit showery in the north, but for the south, still ongoing signals uh, for high pressure to be dominating. Uh, really, week three is the first of the seventh of June. The first week of June takes a high pressure up to our northeast, probably bringing in a warm to very warm east or southeasterly flow. This low off the coast of Portugal might threaten some heavy rain and thunder to the south, but I think overall it's probably relatively dry. And then week four, look at this, it's the 8th to the 14th of June, high pressure more or less back in over top of the country as well. This looks like it could be uh, a very dry and warm opening to the summer of 2020. Temperature anomalies in the week ahead from the 18th to 24th of May are warmer than average. Uh, week Week 2 temperature on is from the 25th to the 31st of May. A little bit cooler average in the north, slightly above average in the south. That means a rather cooler week coming up there. And then go through to week 3, which is the 1st of the 7th of June, and the warmer than average temperatures uh, return. And those warmer than average temperatures then take us through into week 4, the 8th to the 14th of June. Again, is significantly warmer than average. Precipitation anomalies from the 18th to 24th of June. A bit wet and average in the north, a bit dry and average down in the south. Week 2. Precipitation on is for the 25th to 31st May. Again, a bit wetter in the north uh, and drier in the south. Uh, and then we have near normal precipitation for week 3, the 1st and the 7th of May. That's near normal. And week 4 finally goes drier than average, quite substantially so, from the 8th to the 14th of June. So the signals continue to be anticyclonic. You have to say that quite... Um, you know, quite clearly, the signals continue to be anticyclonic. Looks like we're going to have uh, further high pressure dominating weather ruling the roost. And uh, I think we can expect plenty of warm and dry weather to come. There is going to be an interruption from around Thursday to Saturday by the look of it when it turns uh, uh, maybe thundery initially and uh, then rather unsettled for the north and west anyway. But it looks like the high pressure will be back in by the time we get into like the middle of the bank holiday weekend and that high pressure probably takes us through much of next week keeping us mainly dry and warm so the weather's set fair uh high pressure rules are roost um and we remain high and dry really over the next uh over the next foreseeable future which is like week to 10 day period we'll have a look at bank holiday weekend in detail uh this evening that'll be around seven o'clock tomorrow we've got the east Centre 30 day look ahead coming up for the uk and for europe and we'll have a week to 10 day view update as well tomorrow don't forget to check out gaz Webb's discord new feature that we've just uh, started again we're always innovating trying out new things so check out uh gaz Webb's discord see what you think to that and uh yeah we'll uh, be back later on with the uh, next update for Back Holiday Weekend. That's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.